I want to show you guys how they present Putin speaking in the Russian narrative versus what he actually says. In the very beginning point, you see how they said Ru- Russia blames the West. And, and they and they present this as Putin went on this unhinged rant. And they don't show him speaking on TV. Why do you guys think that's not the case? And I explained this tweet because Convo Cow posted a video. I'm really along with it. Um, it's very I, easy. It's a very easy answer. It's because then any Russian, any person who can speak Russian could clearly see what the U.S. is telling us is not what he's saying. That's why. It's not like, you get what I'm saying? Anyone, any person who learned Russian in, 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 in high school or wherever, you'll be able to hear him go, that's not what he's saying. Y'all saying he's saying that, but that's not what he's saying. I can understand Russian. Yeah, they, they, the and they, they can even uh, commentate over it like they usually do. Like they, they can have a, a live commentator over it. Like one of the videos I pulled up, they have an English sub uh, translation. They could easily do that on TV. They just don't. Because I pulled up one segment as an example. But if you watch a few segments it, on the corporate news covering Putin's speech, they'll say, oh, my God, this speech is an example of Putin being unhinged. He's spreading un- unfounded conspiracy theories against the West that rouse up his people and make them anti-U.S. This is why the Putin puppets are tricked. Because Putin is a master propagandist. This is an example. I'm going to give you guys a few examples of stuff he said and why they would never play it on TV. This is what Putin says. Calling out the U.S. They have no limits. And once again, shout out to the Convo Couch, friend of the show. We're going to have Phil, we're gonna have Phil Rella on either tomorrow or Tuesday. We're still hammering the time out. So they're going to be on uh, to talk about this here soon. Friend of the show. They, they clipped this out. Uh, Putin said they have no limits. They are not shy about anything. They killed Soleimani. That's the Iranian general. You can judge Soleimani however you want, but this is an official in another state. They killed him on a territory of a third country and said, yes, we killed him. This is another reason why they don't show Putin speaking. Unlike our fucking moron leaders, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Herschel Walker, unlike these fucking idiots, Putin is a great speaker. And he makes... Dev- and once again, no matter how you feel about Putin, this man makes devastating points about the West. He said, how can you guys call Russia an authoritarian state, a, a, a prison hellhole? Look at how you guys treat African Americans in your country. He was he say stuff like that all the time. During the George Floyd protest, he was like, ha ha, you guys said we was authoritarian. Look at what you guys doing to your protesters there. I bet you guys never heard him say that, didn't you? He has. He has. And uh, this is him bringing up the fact that they killed an Iranian, uh, Iranian general. And then they, the U.S. openly admitted, like, yeah, we killed him. He was enemy of the state. <laughs> Nigga, you guys are everything that you guys claim Russia and China. You guys are killing people in other countries because they disagree with your geopolitical agenda. That is gangster. And that is what Putin is playing when, he, when he's resisting. I'm going to speed this up here. Here's a, here's a video. Dominion of the world. You see how this video. You see how this video, it trans- oh. like you're gonna see an English voice over. over. We're gonna play it. They could easily do this and play it on MSNBC and CNN, but once again, they would never do that because listen to what Putin said about the West here. Um, let me. I'm just gonna reset. Make sure, make sure the audio is good at uh, this time. Yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna play the video, and you definitely see why they will never play the, the speech. So in this segment I just showed you, they're like, "Oh, Putin just blames the West." And they say as if he had no facts. Here's here's Putin on the West. It's precisely what the so-called West has decided to stake in this game. But this game is a dangerous, dirty, and deadly one. It contests the sovereignty of peoples and nations, their identity and uniqueness, and has no regard whatsoever for the interests of other countries. Well, we cannot say rejection directly, but this is basically what we see happening in life. And those who formulate these rules believe that others have no right to their unique path. Everyone needs to abide by these rules. And I would like to remind you of Russia's proposal addressed to our Western partners. The proposal to reinforce trust and build a system of collective security last December. Yet again, this proposal was cast aside. But in the modern world, 
It's not going to be possible to sit this one out. Whoever sows the wind will reap the whirlwind. And if you guys are not sure what he's talking about there, he brought, he brought up how the United States and the West are hypocritical where they do not follow international law. And I want you guys to know is this. They don't say international law. They say rules-based order. Hmm. Rules-based order, which means fucking anything that they approve of. So Israel bombing Syria and committing ethnic genocide against Palestinians, 100% okay, according to the rest, West and the rules-based order. Whenever Iran, China, or Russia does anything, oh my God, look at these crazy motherfuckers. And look at the audience here. And you will see this a lot when speak and Putin speak internationally. I'm going to see how I finally play when well, it and if we, when you see the audience, you see people like nodding their head all the time. Because Putin would go to African countries. And in the West, the story they have about this is always hilarious. Where they say, Russia is brainwashing Africa. Because Putin will go in Africa and he will give the same speech. Where he's like, the West have all these contradictions. They're telling you how you should live your life. They want to condemn your society. They want to be your occupier. They want a do- full spectrum dominance, unipolar uh, world. What Russia want, what we want, we don't want Russian domination. We want a multipolar world where you, everyone, where we have sovereignty and we do not bow to NATO in the United States. So that message horrifies Western chauvinists. But CJ, when, when Putin going to Africa, telling these African leaders that they're like, yeah, what the fuck? Who the Western they are? <laughs> Hell, yeah, Hell yeah. That's why you see Haiti protesters. They have Russian flags. They were like, Russia, China, liberate us. From the interference of the West. So break your bubble, Western chauvinist. There's a reason why BRICS is happening. There's a reason why you have the majority of the global population that is not buying this bullshit because they're not brainwashed by US propaganda. They know the pains and suffering of the unipolar US dominant hegemon has brought, and they want another alternative. So this is what Putin said, and then last part to set this the story. I'm sorry, I went, it went longer than I thought. But the most important uh, fragment of President Putin's speech, so I'm gonna read this part of the speech, uh, which is the message of the world that resonates with Africa, with East Asia, and South America. And Americans can kick, cry, and scream about that fact all they want. But this message resonates with the entire world that the United States had destroyed with the imperialism. So this is, this is what Putin said, and we wrap the segment with this. The collapse of the Soviet Union destroyed the balance of forces. The West felt like a winner and proclaimed a unipolar world order in which only its will, culture, and interest has the right to exist. Once again, if you're a Western chauvinist and you disagree with Putin saying here, I promise you an African do not. I promise you an African heard this shit and they like, Y'all right, motherfucker. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let, me Let me continue. Now, in this historical period of undivided Western dominance in the world affairs is coming to an end. Once again, you guys don't like hearing that shit, but Africa, they're like, niggas, they coming to, nigga, the West is coming to the end. <laughs> Tell you guys, don't get mad at us. Tell you guys what the world feels. The unipolar world is come is becoming a thing of the past. We are standing at a historical milestone. Ahead is the most dangerous, unpredictable, and at the same time, important decade since the end of World War, uh, the Second World War. The West is not capable of governing humanity alone, but is desperately trying to do so. And most of the people, most of the peoples of the world, no longer want to put up with this fact. That is a fact. This is the main contradiction of the new era. In the words of the classics, the situation is, to a certain extent, revolutionary. The upper and lower classes do not want to live like this anymore. Vladimir Putin in Russia challenging the dominant Western unipolar hegemon, the imperialist structure that capitalism needs to thrive on. But they call him Putin an imperialist? You guys see that? We are supposed to oppose the imperialist structure. The imperialist structure, as we know it right now, is the unipolar domination of NATO in the West. That is why socialists all over the world are joining in Africa, in China, the Communist Party in China, is joining Russia to destroy the giant capitalist hegemon, which should be the priority of Marxists. 
not joining NATO like the NATO left. Thought in the segment there. 